future is bright when God's in the middle. And uh, so we're very thankful and we're very excited about what God is going to do uh, here at Empire. And I just want you to understand today that it's not me that's going to do the work, but it's going to be God. Amen. He's going to be, a, he's going to be the one who gets all the glory and all the credit. Um, as we go today, uh, I don't know if you remember, and maybe Bill will get our sermon that when we were here in August... Uh, up on uh, the website uh, but the last time we were here we were talking about this, that same spirit and we went over a couple of points here and uh, the first thing was the spirit of God has been here from the beginning we, we learned that, that God is hovering over us and are ready for us to engage him so that he was able to help us in our time of need and the second thing that we learned uh, is that the spirit of God is activated by faith how many believe that today? It's our faith that activates uh, the Spirit of God. And uh, we also learned that uh, if we just have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, that uh, we could say to this mountain, Be thou removed and cast to the sea, and it has to obey. And the third thing we learned was the same Spirit is still with us. How many know that God is still with us? He hasn't left us. He's still here today. And uh, we, we wrapped up in John 4, 24. It says, For God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what we found out is that God is hovering over, and he is wanting and ready for us uh, to engage him so that he can come and be with us. And today, we're going to be talking about Jesus in our storm, and, uh, or in your storm. Um, if I was to ask you what is the most famous miracle in the Bible, most of us will say the feeding of the 5,000, right? A lot of us know that story uh, of the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, and one of the ones that rank close second is Jesus walking on water. Uh, it's very, very, very well known. And uh, we know it's just a miracle within itself of Jesus walking on the water and a lot of people focus on the fact of Jesus walking on water but they really rarely focus on why Jesus walked on the water today we're going to uh, go through that and we're going to look into why Jesus walked on the water and why he is the answer uh, for you in the midst of your storm in Mark chapter 6 we're going to be starting, if you have your Bibles, in Mark chapter 6. Uh, if you have your Bibles or, uh, you know, your iPad or uh, whatever device that you use to uh, read the Word, I encourage you to bring your Bibles. It's important uh, to get in the Word and read the Word. Amen? Mark chapter 6, it says, Immediately after Jesus, after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and head across the lake to Bethsaida. While he sent the people home, after telling everyone goodbye, he went up to the hills by himself to pray. Late that night, the disciples were in their boat in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was alone on the land. He saw that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and the waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. He intended... To go past them. But when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror, thinking he was a ghost. So they were all terrified when they saw him. But Jesus spoke to them at once Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then he climbed into the boat, and the wind stopped, and they were totally amazed, for they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. So what we're looking at here today is we're looking at a uh, in chapter 6. It tells us uh, that uh, it was between 3 and 6 in the morning that they were out there in this storm. Uh, now, the, the lake itself was about 4 miles wide. In the middle of the lake is when they encountered the storm. How many knows that it's in the middle of your processes in life and in the middle of situations that the storm occurred? You could be going through things in your life and, 
and you have clear direction for God and all of a sudden a storm comes in and you find yourself turned around. This is what the men encountered here. It's in the middle of their uh, rowing, in the middle of them trying to get to the other side, a storm had come. And they left right after dinner time, so by the, by the time Jesus came uh, walking on the water, they had been there trying to get out uh, of the place that they were in for about eight hours. That's a lot of rowing, isn't it? If you look at it even more, they, they were rowing, and practically they were staying still where they was. And so how disheartening that is, that they was trying their best to get out of the storm, yet they found themselves right where they were every time they looked. Have you ever found yourself thought, thought, thinking to yourself that you've made progress and then all of a sudden you look and you're right where you were? There's a saying, taking two steps forward and two steps back. We look at life and we see that it's hard. We look at life and we understand within ourselves that uh, we can't make it happen. God is the only one who can make it happen in the midst of our storm. Uh, one of the things in the scriptures that really caught my eye was why were their hearts hardened? Have you ever wondered why their, eye, why their hearts were hardened? Well, the disciples were always around Jesus. If you see Jesus a lot of times in the scripture, you, you understand that they were around him. They were around his teaching, his healing, and his ministry. They had seen a lot of great miracles by Jesus. And they was being around Jesus all the time. And just before they got on the boat, they had just witnessed the miracle of, of the 5,000 people being fed. So uh, they were privy to seeing a lot of things that Jesus done. But can I tell you today that you can be around Jesus but not truly know who Jesus is? There's a lot of people that are in our church services today all across the world who are teachers, who are even preachers, or are people and laity of the church that know Jesus, but they truly don't know who he is. They've been around him, but they just truly don't know him uh, like they ought to. Uh, they understood that he miraculously broke the loaves so the hungry people would be fed, but they did not yet understand that he himself was the bread of life. That he would come down from heaven and he himself must be broken so that the hungry souls be satisfied. They didn't understand that. They understood that Jesus had power, but they did not yet understand he himself was God and he had power. They understood that Jesus was from God, but they did not understand that he was God. The last time they were dealing with Jesus in a boat, you remember Jesus was un, uh, inside the boat asleep and a storm came. But this time Jesus was with them. And they walked in and they walked under and they asked the Lord, they said, Wake up, Jesus, do you care not that we perish? And in Mark 40 it says that he, that he, that he calmed the storm and he got the, calm, uh, the storm to calm down. And in Mark 4, chapter 40, it says, Then he asked him, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the winds and waves obey him. So they clearly did not understand who was in the boat. They clearly didn't understand Jesus and what he really was to them. He was the Savior that was going to save the world. He was God sent down from heaven to, to come unto us and to help us. There's a danger that we get into if we're not careful. We can be consumed with ministry, can't we? We can be consumed with all that's going around. We can be faithful to the church, be involved in every aspect of the church ministry. And yet if we look at ourselves, we realize that uh, we can be around him and not know him. But whatever happens, we must understand that God is here for us to know him, not just partially, but fully. He's here to help us. And one of the reasons why Jesus walked on the water was to show us his divinity. In other words, he was to show that he was God. Let's look at Mark 6, 48 again. It says, He saw that they were serious in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. About three o'clock in that morning, Jesus came towards him walking on water. 
and he intended to go past. Now, I want you to notice where it says he intended to go past. In other words, Jesus meant to pass him by. You say, well, that's kind of hard and that's kind of cruel. But uh, Mark did that on purpose. He wanted to reference to the time where Moses and God was on Mount Sinai. And he had that reference in Exodus 33 where uh, God was there. And after about 40 days up there and, and, and Moses was there with him, Moses had a hunger that was deep within inside of him. And in Exodus 33, 18, it says, And Moses responded, Then show me your glorious presence. In verse 19, it said, The Lord replied, I will wait, make all my goodness pass before you, and I, will call out, and, and I will call out my name, Yahweh, before you, and I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. Jesus wanted to show them that he was God. He was showing them his glory because he said in verse uh, 50 that they were all terrified. And when they saw him, and when they saw him, but Jesus spoke to them at once and said, Don't be afraid. He said, Take courage. I am here. What he was saying is that the I am is here. What he was telling them is God on himself, wrapped up in the flesh of man, was there for them. He said, the I am that I am is here with you. There's no reason to be afraid. And today, my friend, it doesn't matter what you're going through in your life. It doesn't matter the circumstances that you are dealing with. The I am that I am is here for you and I to help us in our time of need. Amen? I am so thankful. And that's what he was telling them. He was saying, I am God. I am the Son of the living God. Here in the flesh to show you uh, that I will take care of you. And then the second reason was to come near to us with his divinity. We all are very well aware that God told Moses that no one could see him and live. But he told him that he would put them in the cleft of the rock. And he told him that he would make all of his, past, uh, all of his goodness pass before him. And after he passed him, that he would take his hand away so that he could see the back parts of God and see all of his presence. And we see that as that goes on, that in Exodus 33 it says, But you may not look directly at my face, for no one may see me and live. And the Lord continued, Look, stand near me on this rock. As my glorious presence passes by, I will hide you in the crevice of the rock and cover you in my hand until I have passed by. Then I'll remove my hand and I will let you see from behind, but my face will not be seen. We see that we and God himself could not, Moses could not see God and who he was. But when Jesus was walking on the water, they cried out to him. And what it showed is that in his divinity that he wanted to draw nigh to us with his godliness and his holiness. How many knows it still takes a holy life to get through? It still takes a holy life to make it in this world. And so when they began to cry out to him, he said, Don't be afraid, for I am here. And he looks at them, and he comes, and it says, And suddenly they get, he gets into the boat. And today we must understand that when we cry out to him in the midst of our, in the midst of our storm, that he will get into our boat. One of the greatest things, and I like reading the scriptures, where he's, he went off alone to pray. He went there and he prayed by himself. And then he said he's seen in a distance that they were in trouble. And he began to walk. And they say, and they cry, and they, and they look out, and he was coming, walking on the water. And they thought they were seeing a ghost. They thought, surely, a ghost was coming towards them. Now, you're looking at a nighttime when they were going through that. So something had to be illuminating when it was walking on the water. Jesus had to be illuminated. How many know that Jesus is the light? But the reason why, his, why he was shown as the light is simply because he was alone with his father. How many know that when Moses was up in Mount Sinai, when he came down, the Bible said that his face shone. 
and that they were afraid because they didn't understand what was going on. It was because that he was in the presence of God Almighty, his Father. And see, Jesus, again, was up praying, and he was in the presence of his Father. And here he comes along walking on the water in the midst of the storm. And, and it was night, and it was raining, and it was storming. And they looked out, and they seen something that was illuminated. They thought that it was a ghost, and they cried out in terror. And he said, don't be afraid, for it is I. Don't be afraid, for the I am is here. And he gets into their boat. My friend, if we have a connection with the Father, our face and our spirit will begin to illuminate. Amen. And our, and our situations will begin to change. But I'm here to tell you, when we truly know God, we'll know He's in our storm. I don't know what you're dealing with today, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus is in your storm. You might feel alone. You might feel like everything else is falling apart. You might feel as though nothing is going your way. Nobody cares. You feel all alone. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus is there for you. All you have to do is quit looking down at your circumstance and begin to look at Him. Amen. You will find Him in the storm. You will find Him, amen, if you seek Him. And I just I'm so thankful today that Jesus said he will never leave us nor forsake us. I am so thankful today that God is the one who will uh, deliver us and set us free if we would just acknowledge him and help uh, and go towards in our lives so that he will be able to come and draw nigh to us and help us in our need. See, the great thing about the disciples is they found out the answer to their question. Who is this man? Even the winds obey. That question Jesus answered for them. For the first time when he was in the boat, they did not understand. But when he got into their boat, they finally understood who he was. They found out that he was not only uh, the man who provided the bread, but he was the bread of life. They found out that he didn't have power, but they found out he was power. They just found out, uh, they not only found out that he was uh, godly, but they found out that he was God. And I'll tell you, sometimes we go to the storm so God can reveal himself to us. Sometimes we need a wake-up call, don't we? Sometimes we need to understand that sometimes we go through the storm and we go through these trials so that God can be glorified and lifted up and draw us closer to Him. No longer do we have to depend on priests, right? No longer do we have to depend on somebody else to help us in our storm. Jesus is always there, ready to help us, and ready to be there for us. Jesus, in your storm. Today, when we look in this world, we see a storm of brewing, don't we? We see a lot of things going on that our souls are vexed and our souls are wondering and hurting because we know it's against the will of God. We know that this society is turning their backs on God. We understand that the enemy is, is on a rampage. He's going around seeking whom he can devour. One thing we can rest assured on is that God is with us. And if we keep Him with us, He will fight our battles for us and we can get through the storms of life. Jesus in our storms. There is the other side. There is an ending to your storm. His name is Jesus. There's an ending to your pain. His name is Jesus. There's an ending to all of the things in your life that you seem to not be able to get control of. His name is Jesus. If Jesus will walk on the water for, your disciple, for his disciples, he will walk on the water for you. If he will feed the 5,000, my friend, he will feed you. If he will help those in need, he will help you. You just have to realize that He's God. That He can change the very aspect of your situation in a moment, in a second. We must realize that the master of the wind and the rain who walks on the water is on our side. He's for us, not against us. 
He's with us. He's there for us to help us at time of need. You say, well, how do you know the disciples truly knew who Jesus was? Well, the next day, in John chapter 6, verse 26, it says this. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, you want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. Now, the, those who, uh, the 5,000 that he fed came again looking for another meal. And they were hungry again, so they came around looking. And this is what Jesus told them. You want me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. They all got offended and turned away. And in John 6, starting with verse 66, it says, At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. You know, it's in the midst of the storm that that's when a lot of people desert Jesus. It's in the storms when they are so focused on their circumstances and, and what they're going through that they're not looking up to find Jesus. If they stay focused on their circumstances in their situation and they turn away and desert God. But it says this, that Jesus then turned to the twelve and asked, Are you also going to leave? And Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe and we know you are the Holy One of God. They didn't know when he was in the boat with them, but they found out who he was when they was all alone in the storm. And I'm here to tell you today, God wants to reveal himself to you just like he revealed himself in light in the midst of his darkness. When your darkest hour comes, that's when God wants to reveal who he is to you in your life to help you in your storm. I'm so excited today because I know I've seen him in my storm. Times when I felt like giving up. Times when I felt like just, you know what, it's not worth it anymore. It's just too hard. I've been working. I've been rowing. I've been trying to make it on my own. But I'm just stuck where I am. And when I stop focusing on my circumstances and I look up, I see something that looks like a ghost. And I began to cry out to him. And he said, have no fear. Take courage because I am here. Aren't you glad God is here? If we'll just look up, if we'll just focus on Him, if we'll just have our hearts turned towards Him, God will deliver us and set us free this morning. It don't have to wait months down the road. All we have to do is cry out to Him and He will answer us. I tell you, if you don't amen, I, amen me, I'm going to amen myself this morning. He's here for us. We don't have to be alone. We don't have to be afraid. All we have to do is call and cry out to Him. And He's there for us. Jesus is in your storm, my friend. There's nothing too big for our God. There's nothing too big for Him. Cancer's not big enough, right? This world is not big enough. The earth is his footstool. God is in your storm. Jesus is in your storm today. In February, February the 4th, I was going through a storm. And I'm going to close with this. Friday, the end of January, I got a phone call. Me and my family, had, it was about a week, we had, me and my wife had the flu. We got a phone call that Friday that my dad was going to the emergency room. It was hard because we were just getting over the flu and we really didn't know how serious it was. And then they began to talk to us and we made a decision to go on to the hospital to where he was. Come to find out, he had a massive stroke. The doctors came and told us it was unsurvivable. My family, I have three sisters. I'm the youngest one. I'm the only boy, so you know that 
They say they pet me, but I, I think it's different. But we were all in a, in, a, in a quiet room, my mom and my sisters. And when we got the news, my sisters began to break down. And we were there, and we were crying because Dad was our rock. And in the midst of that, it was the worst time of our lives. This is the first time that someone so close to us as a family had passed away. Dad preached for 46 years in ministry. He was my mentor. He was my guide. It was a storm that we were going through. But in the midst of that storm, I said, stop. Let's pray. We began to pray. My mom began to speak in tongues, and we felt the Spirit of God in that place. We felt the Spirit of God there, and we was just basking in His presence. We could have chose to look down at our circumstance, but we chose to look to Jesus in our storm. And I tell you, it was one of the most peaceful goings that I have ever witnessed as a minister. And there are times when I think of my dad and I think of him fondly and and all the memories, and you'll probably hear me talk about him a million times because, like I said, he's my mentor. There's times that I, I cry because I miss him, but I know where he is, and I know where God is. And I know that he's seated on the right hand of the Father interceding for me. And I understand that in the storm, That though it was raging and though it was going, the peace that God gave us in that storm, that we was going to go through this and we was going to overcome it, and that our family is going to be stronger because of it. He gave us the peace that passes all understanding. Why? Because we choose and chose to look for Jesus in the midst of our storm. Today, my friend, it doesn't matter what you're facing. Look for Jesus in your storm. Look for him in your storm and you will find the peace that you need to get you through your storm. Today, Jesus is waiting to get into your boat. Jesus is ready to get into your circumstances and let him be God in your life today. He's the one that we cling to. He's the one that's going to see us through this morning as we stand. Can we just take a few moments today and let's just lift our hands to God and let's just cry out to Him. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Let's look for Jesus this morning in our storm. Let's look for him in the midst of the trouble and turmoil that we're facing today. And let's find him. Lord, we come to you today. And we cry out to you today. God, you're the only one who can save us. You're the only one who can get into our boat. You're the only one who can help us, God, today. And we cry out because, Lord, we need a Savior. We need you in our life. We need you in our family. We need you at our job. We need you in every aspect of our lives. Oh, God, we come to you and we just thank you, God. God, that you want to save us and you want to help us. And today as we cry out to you, God, God, the circumstances that we face, God, those that are facing COVID, we speak right now to get into their boat and heal them and deliver them. Lord, those who are dealing with cancer, God, get into their boat and deliver them from this wretched disease. God, we ask you, God, just to move in our midst today God we need a savior we need you in our lives today God oh God we thank you in this place we praise you in this place because we know without you our boat will sink we will be covered by the waves and we will drown in this life but if we look to you oh God if we look to you you will deliver us and set us free Oh, we thank you, God, and we thank you for your presence we feel in this place. Oh, we love you and we lift you up, oh God, and we thank you for all that you do. 
Oh, God, we just thank you for your anointing. We thank you, God, for your presence. We thank you, God, for the peace that you give us this day. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your matchless name, oh God. You're the fairest of 10,000, God. You're the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you today, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.